All right, so what we're going to be doing today is uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about modeling objects to scale. And uh, here's a quick example of something that I've, I've rendered out. Uh, this is a, a wine glass that was left behind from one of the art openings. Ended up in my office somehow. I don't know how. But uh, anyway, this is what I want to try to model today. And this is a quick study that I did. Uh, it's a little bit stretched out of proportion with this view, but... Um, it's just the, the translation from the projector from my machine. Well, what I've done is I've taken just a simple ruler and first I've just kind of like measured it out to try to figure out what the basic scale and proportion are. The other thing is you can see this, you know, really nice glass effect that I have here. I'll talk a little bit about lighting and materials on Monday. For today, we're just going to be worrying most about the shapes that, I've, uh, that we're going to be modeling. So can anyone guess how I made this? Yeah, which nerves? The first one. It's called the lathe nerves. That's the, exactly right. I used the lathe nerves to, to model this object. So let's talk about how I did that. Uh, we'll just open up a new one here. Basically, first of all, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about how to change the units of measure to begin with. So um, if you go to edit and down to preferences, there are a lot of the different settings that you can change. Uh, in Cinema 4D. And these have to do with the different interface, the viewports, all kinds of different things that you can set your own preferences to. One of them is the units. And with the display units, you can choose anything from pixels to kilometers to meters to yards, foot, miles, feet, miles, all the way down to inches. So what I've done with this is I've just selected inch increments, and that gives me a basis that I can start from. So if you do that, um, you can see that when I drop in a model, let's say, for example, a cube, it's set at 200 inches by 200 inches by 200 inches. So if I were to change the units of measure, obviously that would change as well. Now, 200 inches is pretty big, so we're going to be sort of scaling down a little bit. What I, what I do is, uh, whenever I start an object, I like to give myself a, a point of reference to work from. Okay, So often what I'll do with something like this cup, if I measure this cup, it's about three inches wide, and it's about five inches tall. And uh, uh, of course, it's uh, symmetrical, so I'm going to use that lathe tool. So those are the only two measurements I need to worry about. So what I want to do is I'll click on the multiple viewports, and I'm just going to drop in a plane. Okay, This is going to be a guideline for me to follow as I'm making this object. All right. So I'll bring this plane in. I want the plane to be oriented along the Y and the X, which means I want it to be flat along the Z plane. And if you notice in the Attributes Manager, under Object, you can change the orientation of a plane by just selecting what uh, flat plane you want it to lay on. So I want it to lay flat on the positive Z, and I do that, and now I can see it oriented in that uh, panel. All right, so in my, X, uh, in my Y and X viewport, at the front view, I have my... Uh, my plane. Now it's 400 by 400 inches, and I want it to be 3 by 5. So for the, uh, for the, you'll notice what happens if I make this 3 by 5. It's going to be almost invisible. <laughs> okay, like where did it go? Uh, it's gone. You can zoom in on it if you like. All right. The automatic default is to make things 400 by 400 or 200 by 200. But you can zoom in on it. You can also, if you want to, go to some of the other viewports so you can see. There's under tools, you can grab the magnifying glass. This is another way you can do this quickly. You can just click and select around that object. All right, Just drag over it, let go, and it, you might need to do it a couple times. And you could zoom in on that, that object as well in that sort of form. All right. The other thing that I do sometimes, if you know, just because sometimes I'm lazy, is I'll just add a couple zeros. All right. Since it's already dropped in 400 by 400, you can make it 300 by 500. And you can always scale it in proportion with itself, right? So the biggest thing we're worried about is those proportions. Like, what are the basic proportions? Um, OK, so here's my 3 by 5 uh, perimeter that this cup has to fit within, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a spline within that perimeter that fits. Now, because the cup is hollow, right, I'm also I'm going to be drawing the inside and the outside of this thing, because I want it to really wrap around the whole entire thing. Remember that if you just draw a straight line, you're going to get a very a, you know, paper-thin kind of edge. But this glass actually has some depth to it, so I want to draw this 
so it has some depth and dimension. Um, now I can do this freehand, um, just quick and easy, just sort of map it out, the basic freehand. Um, I can also, you know, use um, other uh, tools as well. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to draw this in a linear format first because it's a little bit easier to draw, uh, you know, the basic shape and form linearly, so very graphically first, and then I'm going to change it to another setting so it'll bend those forms around. So I have my linear tool. Um, if I measure the halfway point of this glass, so at two and a half inches, I have, um, you know, the high point of the, of the curve right here. So below that, between two and a half, uh, let's see, about one and a quarter is where the middle of that, this stem is located. So uh, this is, you know, this, this is divided up into thirds here. I'm just going to, uh, or quarters rather, I'm just going to start drawing this out from the, the bottom middle and then all the way up and around. So basically what I'm going to do is just start at the middle here. Remember, you want to start your, your, your lathe spline along the y-axis, okay? Uh, I'm just going to start clicking points, and I'm going to kind of simulate this curve of the wine glass going up and around. All right? And what I want to do is I might need to zoom in a little bit because I'm going to give this thing some depth. Let's zoom in here. Oops, there we go. And... As I get up here, I'm going to make this have a little bit of depth. Okay, so you see I'm giving this the, uh, the wall of the glass. You know, imagine you cut the glass in half, and you can see the, the perimeter all the way around it. So I'm just plotting points, giving it a similar thickness all the way around um, to make it that shape and form. There we go. I get back to the middle. This is where the stem starts. Let me just zoom out so you can see here. All right, this is where my stem is coming into play. So I'm going to map down a few more points over here. I'm going to come out for the flare of the edge. One more point there. And then come up to the middle. Okay, so you see, you can see the kind of shape that I'm trying to draw here. It, it encompasses the inside of the cup and the outside of the cup and comes all the way down and around. Now, this is really geometrical, so what I want to do is, uh, well, first of all, I can play around with these points now, right? So since I have my basic shape, I can look at the cup and profile and, just, and make some decisions about the points that I've made. I think what I'm going to do is move a few of these things, click on my points tool. I'm just going to grab the selection tool and, and, and highlight these two points, and I'm going to move those guys together so they're a little bit farther out. Uh, I'm going to take these two points, move these guys a little bit farther out. And uh, let's see, I'm just trying to match the curve, the general curve of this glass. That looks pretty good. I'm also going to take these two guys down here and move them up because they're, they've gotten lower than my, uh, my perimeter of five inches. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, um, with this spline, I'm just going to select it and go to Object. Notice that the, in the Attributes Manager, the type is linear, okay? Now, I can change that at any time. So I can change it from cubic, a kima. I'm just going to change this to the Bezier curves. And you see what happens when I do that? It curves, makes those curves in between. Okay, so it's really easy to draw geometrically, right? It's hard to draw freehand to make a perfect shape and curve. But just by plotting those points, you can make a nice uh, geometric curve. And then by switching the type to Bezier curves, you can really control that sort of curvature. Now, again, if you click on any of those points, you can change the curvature if you need to. Like if I wanted to you know, uh, change, let's say, this one right here. If I wanted to grab those handles, I could stretch it out and make it more a little bit less of a curve or more of a curve. Let's zoom in so you can see that a little bit more here. What are we doing on time? All right. There we go. So see this? I can, I can always, grab, oops, always grab those handles. Make sure you have the Move tool selected, and you can change the curvature if need be, right? I'll make that a little bit flatter like that. All right, now that I have my, uh, my spline, okay? Uh, let's just zoom back out so you can see. Now that I have my spline, pretty much in the, in the general proportions and dimensions that I need, I don't need this plane anymore. This plane was just the guideline to help me uh, get the basic shape down. So I'm going to delete that so I can see my uh, general outline. Now I'm going to grab my lathe nerves, and I'm going to pop this spline right into that, and it's going to make my wine glass. 
in proportion, in scale, looks pretty good. Let's check it out in, per, in uh, perspective here. Okay, so you see we've got we've got that object. It might not be exactly perfect, but remember you can always move those points around. You can move those curves around. You see the interior has a nice smooth curve to it, nice shape and form. Okay, so for one of your objects today in modeling, uh, you know, with proportion and scale, you might want to choose a, a cylindrical object and play around with modeling those points and curves. All right.